Take two. Let's see if I get messed with again. So we're going to start at the quark assessment test. Now, Deku goes, since he got first in the uh, entrance exam, he'd have to go first. And what he does is he basically seals Bakugo into his body, except for Bakugo's arms. Deku seals his arms away and basically puts Bakugo's arms out. And he's able to use Bakugo's explosions. And he basically, in a sense, catapults the ball. So yeah. So what Deku does, he basically takes the sludge villain sludge and in a sense almost disconnects his hand. But what he does is he does something similar to what Luffy would do is he would basically just spin the sludge around and then he'd have the ball connected to the sludge but he'd have Baku's hand shooting explosions to basically build up as much speed as possible and then once Deku thinks he has the maximum speed he can get he'd launch it which would get him 720 meters well that is more than canon so yeah Baku would get the same for the uh, for the 50 meter dash, Deku against Bakugo, Deku just shoots Sludge at Bakugo's feet, and Bakugo would try to do an explosion to shoot himself forward, but would only fall to the ground. And I think someone would say that that's cheating, probably Bakugo, and Aizawa says, technically I said you could do whatever you want with your quirk. You don't have to play by the rules. And you probably say something along the lines of, if the villains aren't going to play by the rules, then why should you? And Bako, hearing this, would basically be angry, would quickly explode the small amount of sludge that is keeping them connected to the ground. It would explode forward, trying to hit Deku. But Deku would basically do what he calls slingshot, and he'd put sludge on his arms, basically um, hitting the ground in front of him like at the end of the 50 meter dash and pulling himself forward almost hitting the ground but probably just turning his body into sludge so he doesn't take damage now we skip and overall Deku gets about let's say first or second because in this Todoroki would be very intrigued at what Deku's quirk is and thanks Deku as a rival already because of what he sees Deku can do now what Todoroki knows that Deku's quote-unquote weakness is is range because he from what he's gotten so far his quirk is some type of in a sense possession quirk he can possess people's bodies but to do so he's pretty sure he has to touch them first so Todoroki thinks oh I'm gonna win so I might as well show off so, overall, Deku and Todoroki are tied, mostly, but Todoroki is able to get the edge just slightly in some of them, like the long jump, because Todoroki can basically shoot himself forward with the ice. Deku would only get, like, a couple meters, or, like, just a bit further than what he did in canon. Todoroki would get way more. So, yeah. But we skip to the combat training. Same teams, and... This actually goes by pretty easy because of what Deku's quirk allows him to do. And at this point, Baku knows what Deku's quirk can do. And just to be fair, All Might has researched Deku. And he basically told Deku to release any seals he has on anyone already. So Baku, Ida, or Raka release any seals he has on them. And he would. He'd basically say there are no more seals on them. And All Might would say, good. We want this to be a fair match. And they would go, but the moment Baku appears, Deku, or Baku is trying to, you know, explode Deku, but Deku basically says, Sludge, uh, let's, let's call this Sludge ca uh, Catapult, as he basically just puts Sludge on his hand, hits it against the wall, grabs some of the concrete that the wall is made of, and is basically spinning it as much as possible and launches it at Bakugo. Which Bakugo would almost get hit by it. And this is when Bakugo's like, you're supposed to be a hero, why are you being a villain? 
Amy's thinking, that's right, you are a villain. You can possess people's bodies. And then this is when Deku basically goes up to him and says, I don't have to possess people's bodies. It's just funner, he says, as he basically punches Baku in the face, putting his seal right on his forehead. And at first no one noticed it, but the moment Baku gets close to Deku, as Deku's just walking past him, Bakugo disappears, and Bakugo, now that he has a seal on his body, is being sealed into Deku's body. Let's not even say Deku's body, he basically at this point has his good items, and what he'd have would be a small bag of marbles. And he'd have a marble, and it'd be a very, very strong one, let's say made by someone's quirk, so yeah. Now when he goes to fight Ida, it's going to be a 2 on one Ida versus Bob or versus Deku in Uraraka, so yeah. It's so easy for Deku to fight. I mean, like, so easy. Uraraka does go in first, and it's because Deku wants them to have a chance, and Uraraka goes in there, is able to get Ida, and he just starts floating, and this is when Deku's like, it was just not fair because of what I can do with my quirk, he says. As he literally just shoots Sludge at Ida, and basically puts him on the ceiling. Like, since he's already floating, Deku can literally just stick into the ceiling with a sludge. And All Might's about to call a match, but Deku would just, you know, touch the bomb, and that's when All Might's like, well, I guess they would technically won either way. So, he would call that the hero team wins. Now, if you don't realize, Deku's very overpowered in this. But we skip to... I believe it's the USJ. So, in this... It would be Momo as president, Ida vice president, and Deku as class representative. The people that basically, uh, when the media gets in, it happens similar to in canon. Ida would basically, you know, get everyone's attention, but I think he'd have a bit of help with Deku because of what Deku can do. And Deku basically, what he'd do is, he would just... Let's say he does a sonic whip, and that's the way he does it, he's make like a small whip out of a sludge, and basically whips it to make a small little sonic boom, which a lot of whips can actually do. So he makes a small little cracking sound with it, very loud at that, and people turn around, and Ido would do what he does. But we skip. On the bus, everyone's talking about their quirks, and when it comes to Deku's quirk, everyone's listening to great detail, and Deku just says his quirk is a ceiling quirk. It works in what people think it could work. So, he can put marks on, well, anything, technically. In those marks, he just calls it a seal. He has up to five that he can do. He can either seal one thing into, like, so he can seal stuff into other objects. He can put people into objects, he can seal people into his body, he can seal his body into other people, but the way it works is when he seals people into his body, they're like in a prison, but when he seals his body into them, he can take over their body and use it. And people are starting to realize how overpowered his quirk actually is. But we skip, and when the villains actually attack, Deku is able to do a lot more because Deku literally, let's say, he seals the water away. All the water in that little area, he seals it away. Let's say he basically isn't all at once. It's at first like a quarter, like in just a couple, like a minute, in a minute, almost all of it's already gone, but the boat is slowly basically going downward and Deku's just in there his body is sludge and he's these people are attacking him and he's not really feeling anything now we skip and at this point Shigaraki has tried to at this point kill kill I remind you Sue he, he tries to kill Sue and Sue, I'm just going to call her Froppy. So he tries to kill Froppy, but Froppy is able to basically get out of the way because Deku basically grabs her with the sludge and moves her out of the way. Shigaraki goes and touches Deku's head 
looking like he decayed Deku or killed him. Because I'm saying this, it happened a bit later than in canon. And Aizawa's eyes are basically, he can't really see anything because they're drenched in blood. But Deku basically turned his body to sludge and reformed and basically says, What was that supposed to do? As Shigaraki basically is like, what happened? And he tries to grab Deku's arm again. Deku quickly turns into sludge and he's like, he notices part of his arm is like somewhat decaying because he saw what happened to, or he's looking at what happened to Aizawa and he's like, that's what he's trying to do to me. As he basically disconnects his arm from, well, the decaying part from his body and then rebuilds it with the sludge and he's like, I guess I'm kind of the counter to you, aren't I? As Deku's wondering, does he have to touch me with all five fingers, or can I just touch him? If I touch him, do I decay? He's wondering all this. And this is when Shigaraki basically sticks the gnomo on him. Deku's head goes flying off, like, complete flying off, but it turns to sludge. And this is when Deku's just like, yeah, no. And he's basically just moving around, and he causes move a thousand whips. And it's basically Deku making small whips all over his body, moving them at very high speeds, trying to basically hit the Nomu, which is not doing a lot. And this is eventually when All Might shows up. And the Nomu can't hurt Deku. Deku can't hurt the Nomu. But yeah, we skip. It ends similar to in canon, except I'm going to say Deku's able to just seal the Nomu away into one of his marbles. But before anything else can happen, All Might basically tells Deku he knows that Deku has a villain sealed inside him and he's been using him. So Deku is forced to give up the sludge villain and now he literally has nothing at this point to, well, fight with. But he's just like, I guess that's the limitations of what I can do. There are some laws I have to, well, follow, but eh. So he does have to give up the sludge villain. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it off here if you want to see another part. Uh, tell me. Anyway, guys, bye. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and have a wonderful time.